to Spain. Uh, professor Carmen Magallon, uh, she is a university professor and she is also the president of the foundation of the Seminary Research for Peace. And she has um, been studied, she made a lot of studies. She graduated from physics. She has a master's degree in history and philosophy of science. She has a doctorate of history of science. She has a lot of knowledge, but her main uh, point is the, the peace and women. So she has written a book, um, Women in the Verge of Peace. Paradise that 
rejects war and all kinds of violence. Mm -hmm. And these women's voices for peace are inside a historical tradition. I can speak, for instance, for queen, uh, of queens in Spain that uh, camped in the middle of the battlefield to stop in the Middle Ages. Eh? A queen from my area, Aragon, they, she camped in the middle of the battlefield to stop war. So there is a long tradition of women. But uh, what are the characteristics of this kind of thinking and practicing? The characteristics is, uh, are that uh, women placing the lives of human beings at the center of their priorities. Second, women are able, many women, not all in general, but many, of being critical of the violent or unjust actions of their own group. This is very important to solve a conflict, to, critica, to, to be critics with their own group. Huh? Uh, because if you are critics uh, in front of the other, this is what men do, and this is not to, uh, to build bridges. Working together across conflicts and divided societies. Use of symbolism and creativity. Hmm? The symbolism uh, to protest uh, women's work uh, are, doing, are important. Practicing advocacy, search for solutions from within and outside politics. Outside politics, I mean, for instance, mother in Argentina, they uh, achieved many uh, achievements because they were mothers and they were considered out of politics and they do uh, uh, the best against the uh, looking for her children, you know? Support to other women, sorority. This is other characteristic. So, uh, the tradition of women peacemakers include understanding women, lines of thought generated by women thinkers or groups, organizing women's groups, and also a majority of anonymous women who assume the radical human vulnerability, all of us are vulnerable and respond with care, mothers and others. Huh? These anonymous women are part of this tradition. So now uh, I will pass some slides like a film because I don't have time, but for instance, outstanding women to show some. Uh, Bertha von Sundet, the first Nobel Peace Nobel Prize, 1905. Mm -hmm. Elaine Magopi, mm -hmm. Liberia, Nobel Peace Prize. Malala Yousafzai, uh, Rigoberta Menchu from Guatemala. Uh, the last uh, women peace, uh, less peace prize, Narcis Mohammadi from Iran. And also Strasa Zahovic, the women in black, very So we can add many, many others, outstanding women. There's, uh, also thinkers, writers, philosophers, and I, I am very fond of Virginia Woolf, Virginia Woolf, and her book, Three Guineas. You know, this book was, uh, she wrote this book when uh, someone, uh, sent to her some photographs of the Spanish Civil War and asked her, how can women help to prevent war? And the, the book is wonderful, but you can, uh, the content can be resumed in this phrase. We can best help you to prevent war, not by repeating your words and following your methods, but by finding new worlds and creating new methods. This is appealing for a different practical, a different uh, way of thinking. So, uh, other organizing group, women's groups, for instance, uh, here in the Middle East, uh, Women in Black in Jerusalem, 1988 is the beginning, and then later, Women in Black in Belgrade, in uh, 
1991. Uh, and this is a question we have to think, no? Worry la guerra de la historia, uh, italianas, compañeras, is, uh, is, uh, is the same that uh, we abolish uh, esclavitud. Oh, esclavitud. Yeah. So you, we can abolish the war, or you have to, or you have to work. And uh, here in Cyprus, well, you know best than me, but I knew in the past uh, some women from Han across the divide. Thank you. Yeah. Han across the divide, yes. Yeah. And I, you are uh, nice to meet you. Because in one Congress, uh, the initiatives of women in the Mediterranean, I read about your experience and presented this case of hand across the divide. Mm -hmm. But also, these are the points that we know, and uh, also mothers of Argentina, of course, I've been with mothers, with uh, grandmothers of Argentina, and they were working, uh, searching for children and grandchildren, and against impunity. Impunity is very important to work against because if uh, there is impunity, uh, the, uh, there is, uh, the deaths and prosecutions are continued. So also Colombia, Colombia, <coughs> Colombia, here is in the second national summit, Women and Peace, and we were invited and this in this uh, phot photograph, there are also representatives the uh, countries as Norway, uh, Sweden, Spain, who supported the process of women pushing for the agreement uh, under the uh, under the resolution 1325. Resolution 1325 has been a tool for many groups of women, women around the world, to push for. Uh, the agreement. And there were 350 uh, women's organizations. Important. Uh, important with conflicts because conflict is everywhere. Conflict is in the sense that they have their differences, but they agree to push for the peace. Uh, an organizing women's group in the 20th century, there are in Ireland, in Libya, in Lebanon, in the USA, in many countries. So <laughs> in Cyprus, of course. And just for finish, I want to mention uh, in this uh, century, one um, moment, important moment, is the Women's International Congress in The Hague, 1915. It's in this Congress. In the middle, in the middle of the First World War, uh, a, a thousand, um, a thousand and three hundred women were able to meet in the Hague to push for finish the war. So that's important because the men of their countries were killing each other, and they were able to uh, to trip to travel in Europe and also from the USA coming in a boat who, which was in danger to be torpedoed. So this is important. Why is important? Because they are the mothers, the mothers of the United Nations. Huh? We have come together to protest and to propose measures for the achievement of permanent peace. And they approve what well, this is. Uh, are the mothers, uh, Jane Adams, uh, Emily Gimmers, Aleta Jacob. So they were in her countries, their countries, the first medical, the first church. Uh, so they were uh, educating women who <coughs> know each other through the international alliance suffrage. So they approved 20 resolutions in seven sections. I cannot explain, but I. I uh, push you to read it because they are important. Uh, uh, they are important. Mm, women at work, I have this. Uh, for instance, they say that uh, uh, mm, 
it is uh, necessary to have a forum to discuss the conflicts between countries because if they don't have uh, this forum, they go to war. So they are the mothers of the unity of nations. Right? Before the society of nations, it was before. Uh, other point I want to remark is that they say we have to stop the commerce and uh, the production and commerce of weapons. Of weapons. And uh, universal disarmament because in this business there is a, pot a potent route yes. for war. Yes. It's the business of, of, of weapons. And then uh, in 1932, 32, women collected 6 million signatures calling for universal disarmament. So, and a hundred years later, we are here uh, still working against weapons. And weapons will not save us. And in front of Ukraine, a problem. Uh, I've written, uh, weapons will not save us. Well, uh, education of children, actions to be taken. Look at this the kind of women, no? Uh, so, eh? They were able to, to travel, to speak, to be in danger, and to put her knowledge, because many of them were thinking, just to propose to visit uh, the mandataries, uh, belligerent and neutral in Europe, the Pope and the president of the USA, President Wilson. So they cannot vote but they were ambassadors. So that is important because women can take our liberty uh, in ourselves out there. Anyway. Uh, and just for this, I realized that, yes, uh, there is this uh, women's voices in Israel, Palestinian, working together. Just thousands of women from the Women Wash Peace and the Palestinian Association for Women of the Sun met on the 4th of October 2023 at the Dead Sea in a historic demonstration. I've read it, I'm not there. And they uh, said, we Palestinian and Israeli mothers are determined to stop the cycle of bloodshed and change the reality of the difficult conflict between the peoples for the sake of our children's future. Three days later, the order began. So, uh, but uh, the same uh, organization is telling, we must end this madness. We must end this madness. We have to free the hostage. We have to stop the bombing of uh, Gaza. We have to stop because thousands of people dying. You know? We mothers together with women from all over the world must unite to stop this mind. I believe in that. I believe. Yes. So. <laughs> finally, finally, some challenges. Uh, the challenge of influencing the system making. Uh, this woman in the 1915 visits to leaders in the midst of one war, millions of deaths. So we can visit the leaders, uh, the search for international tools. We did it and we uh, achieved the 1325 seeking support from friendly countries and democracy. Yeah, and the second challenge I put here is the challenge to pass from authority to power. Uh, we don't have authority, but we need also power. A notion of power that doesn't not seek interest in position over, but paths of peaceful coexistence. Not a power over, but a power for, for doing things. And yes, that is uh, to sum up. We have a legacy, a tradition of women peacemakers. Let's keep this civilizing legacy alive. 
let us continue working for the eradication of violence and the resolution of conflicts through diplomatic and negotiation channels. Oh, my English, all right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very interesting. Very enriching. Now, 